Welcome back everyone. Today we'll talk about again once again about price to book value, how we can value banks using the fundamentals of that bank. This is justified price to book value model or the ROE model or the warranted equity valuation model. So let's go through an, an example today of how we can value a bank. So we know have this formula that we reached from an, an earlier episode. It's basically just five price to book is ROE minus G divided by cost of equity minus G. This would give you the justified price to book value multiple. Then you can multiply that by the book value of the bank. Then you can up, come up with the valuation for the bank. Okay. So what do you need to do? Or what do you need to have? You need to have growth rate. You need to have the ROE. You need to have the cost of equity. If you divide this by that, you get the multiple itself. Once you know the multiple, you actually this is not the end result. You just you don't just need the multiple. You need the multiple to calculate the fair value for the bank. So if you have the book value per share for the bank, you'll be able to calculate the valuation or the fair value for that bank based on its fundamentals. What are the fundamentals? Growth rate, ROE, and cost of equity. Okay, we'll look at an example here and. Uh, let's walk through this formula today we will talk about uh, a stock and we have some uh, data from its balance sheet uh, we looked up the bank's balance sheet and we looked up the uh, book value of the bank and it turns out that we have a book value per share of 10 so this is the book value of the bank which is uh, shareholders equity divided by number of shares okay then we calculate the ROE we found out it's 20 percent what does this mean means that the bank can actually make 20 percent return every year on whatever book value they start with at the beginning of the year so they start with 100 they make 20 dollars so the 100 dollars of the year at the beginning of the year they make 20 dollars uh, throughout the year in net earnings then we have the growth and the growth here just uh, uh, arbitrarily you put it as zero no growth rate but definitely you can assume growth rate as I mentioned before based on the of other formula but here we just put a zero then we have the cost of equity which we calculated and we will we'll discuss it in more details in other episodes how we can come up with the cost of equity let's assume it's 10 percent here and now we have all the components for calculating price to book value multiple okay so ROE minus G what's the ROE is 20% minus G G is the zero so basically the numerator sums up to 20% then I divide by the cost of equity cost of equity minus G again G is still zero and the cost of equity is 10 so it's 20% divided by 10% it's two times so I have the two times price to book value multiple you have the book value per share of 10 then if you just multiply the two together your fair value would actually be 20 whatever 20 dollars 20 pounds 23 L it's 10 book value per share times 2 so basically you're actually paying twice the big the book value per share for this bank if you want to fairly value it given that the bank has zero growth rate okay so let's assume that the the, the stock gives you a return of 10 percent or 20 percent and your required return is actually 10 percent which is the cost of equity you're willing to pay twice that book bank's book value so the bank the banks the bank actually makes double the cost of equity or the required return that you want so actually you're willing to pay twice as much but let's say play let's play with the growth rate let's assume that the growth rate is not zero it's five percent what happens actually when you have a higher growth rate five percent here the the justified price to book multiple that you would be you willing willing to pay would actually be higher would be three times here why again it's roe minus g divided by cost of equity minus g so it's 20 minus 5 it's 15 uh, cost of equity minus G it's five that's three times so 
why did why are we willing to pay higher price to book multiple for this bank it's simple because actually now the bank is growing as generating a return of re of 20 that's higher than the cost of equity of 10 okay so as long as you're uh, you're making a return higher than the cost of equity you'll actually be willing to pay more let's assume that your growth rate actually zero and again it's go back go goes back to one two times but let's say it's it's 15 uh, the growth rate is actually uh, 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 you can just play around with the numbers you can, uh, let's say the cost of equity is 25 percent and your ROE is 20 percent now actually you should not pay even the book value you should actually pay less than the growth uh, pay less than the book value which is 80 percent of the growth of the book value let's say that uh, there's growth in this bank the bank here is actually making a return of 20 percent that's less than the cost of equity less than the required rate of return and but on top of that they're actually growing actually instead of paying 80 percent of the book value now you should actually pay even less you should pay 75 percent of the book value why is that because the bank is growing while it's generating a return that's less than its required rate of return actually they're burning cash the bank should not grow at all because the growth that they're, they're generating is actually not uh, the right growth because actually your ROE is lower than your cost of equity in our coming episodes we'll talk more about how we can use this model to value real life examples thank you <music>